Okay, so hi, I'm Nick Marshall and I'm here to talk to you about a game that is very, very terrible, but also very, very special. And I need a clicker. Where's the clicker? There's the clicker. I've got I've run out of hands already. Ah. One second. Run out of hands. Jake, do you want to hold a terrible game? Hold the box. Hold the box. Don't steal it, please. So I'm here today to talk to you about Sprung. Now, Sprung is a game I found in a bargain box for 3 dollars in 2005. And I felt very dirty buying this game. You can't judge a book by its cover, but I'm going to judge Sprung by its cover right now. Sprung, a game where everyone scores. So I'm just going to jump in with some of the elements you're seeing here. Um, everything you're seeing here is taken completely out of context, and I'm going to explain why. But the back is even worse. Got friends, get benefits. Now, I've got a box here with a different bit, which Jake, if you just pass that around to everyone to have a look, uh, it'll come around during the talk, and you can kind of see just how bad this box art is. But what is Sprung? Well, I don't quite know anymore. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to read what Sprung says it is from the official manual. Now, we have a choice here, ladies and gentlemen. Do I read it in a really stupid voice, or do I read it in a dramatic voice? Do you want dramatic? All right, OK. Welcome to Snowbird Mountain, the exclusive hotel and ski resort tucked away deep within the scenic Rocky Mountains. This picturesque hotspot is where you'll find charming locals and attractive guests all looking for a good time. In the daylight hours, Snowbird offers an array of winter sports, seasonal activities, and breathtaking views. But the real fun begins when the sun sets and the nightlife kicks into high gear with clubs, restaurants, and hot tubs. This story revolves around Brett and Becky, our two players who have come to the mountain and all of a sudden find themselves in a hot dating scene where everyone has something to offer. That is the official description of Sprung. <laughs> Thank you. Um, however, nothing like that actually happened. So Sprung in a nutshell is, Sprung was made in Halifax, Canada by a team of Ubisoft developers, and it was rated very poorly. Games Radar called it the most vacuous, air-headed excuse for a game we've ever had the misfortune to suffer. And I realize now that could be a review of Canada, <laughs> like the way it looks. I'm not, I'm not dissing Canada. Um, so here's what the game basically looks like. Uh, you play on, you're the bottom character on the DS. Imagine this is a DS screen. Um, and on the top screen is the person's response. So you say things down here, you get responses up there. It's a conversation game. There is little more to it than just conversation. It was written by an acclaimed US screenwriter who, when I asked her about it on Twitter, said they added things. Uh, I didn't do all of it. Never played it. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's a very, very, very good screenwriter, the rest of her work. But um, Sprung, she kind, of, she kind of just sort of denies a little bit. But um, you'll see why. So here is Becky and Brett. These are the two player characters. Do you want to hear the official description of them? Yeah. All right, okay, okay. Get ready for this shit. <laughs> Brett comes to Snowbird on a mission to seduce his lifelong friend, Becky. But suddenly, girls are hitting on him left and right. How can he balance his goal, maintain his integrity, and not blow all this attention? As Brett, you have to bring your it's actually in inverted commas, to get Becky, the hottest girl on the mountain. Becky is on the mountain, hanging out with her friends, Erica and Kiki, getting over the trauma of her cheating ex-boyfriend. And she picked the right place, because here she's found herself at the center of attention, surrounded by lots of guys. As Becky, you have to mingle with fresh faces, handle tricky situations, and find the right guy. So there you go. That is the end of the official description of Sprung. Now we're going to hit into the deep, dark reality of Sprung. So dating sims, um, you might play some like Hato for Boyfriend or some other Japanese ones. Generally speaking, lots of text, lots of writing, branching narratives, lots of people to, to romance and stat building occasionally. Sprung has none of that. There is no stat building in Sprung. There are no branching narratives in Sprung. Sprung is something else entirely. In fact, only 20% of Sprung is actually spent dating, preparing for a date, or trying to score. You spend 80% of Sprung doing something that is not dating. That is legit. I, I spent a lot of time on this pie chart. Well, not the actual pie chart, but getting the data for it. That is honestly the 80-20 divide of Sprung. 
In reality, a lot of the game is spent helping your friends in their lives or just plain craziness. This sounds great, and some of it is wonderful experimentation with that sort of dialogue system, but Sprung is utterly broken. So the overarching... Sorry. We'll talk this guy in a sec. The overarching narrative of Sprung has no internal continuity. Internal continuity is the continuity from a scene to a scene. Basically, what happens in Sprung in one scene does not necessarily guarantee to apply to the next scene. Uh, early examples manifest them in sort of tiny ways, like one character will introduce themselves to you and then you'll meet them again later and they'll act like they've never met you. Later on, it gets crazy. So this is Danny. He's a bit of a pun sort of uh, joker. He likes puns, he likes jokes. You get set up with him if you're only playing as Becky, and on that date, it's always guaranteed to end terribly. And quite often, he ends up crying, and you end up just leaving him crying, because you're you, you, know, you can be quite a nasty person in Sprung. Um, however, Danny kind of forgets this some of the time. So sometimes you'll see him; he'll be pissed off at you because you made him cry on a date. Other times, he'll be totally cool with you. In fact. As Becky, you can actually make out with him twice more in the course of the game with no further emotional consequences for anyone. You think that's bad? This is Becky's boyfriend on the mountain. His name's Connor, and he is a dick. And you can get revenge on his cheating ass by uh, calling up his dad and telling his dad, who's a very powerful business mafiosi man, that he is having an affair with his dad's mistress. And Connor magically disappears. Only, only he doesn't. No, Connor comes back later on as your rival in a poetry slam. <laughs> a, why the fuck is there a poetry slam in a 2004 game about a bunch of rich kids on a mountain? And also, why does no one notice he's come back for a poetry slam? No one remarks on it. You will literally hurl insults and poems at him in a sort of rap battle of poetry. And then he'll come back later on as the official comeback. And everyone will be, oh no, look, Connor's back. There is, no, there is no consistency or internal continuity. And that is kind of wonderful. Because the, the people who wrote this, the developers and the writer, they kind of knew the rules weren't going to apply. So anything could happen in Sprung. And to make it even more crazy, you get given loads of items. So if you think you play a typical adventure game, you get like a few items and they all have a purpose. In Sprung, you get dozens and dozens of items. And not all of them have a purpose. So you get some that are just odd little side quests that don't have any sort of purpose. You get a hedgehog. One day you'll wake up with a hedgehog in your bed. You'll be like, where the fuck does this hedgehog come from? You can give the hedgehog to anyone you want, but only one person is the true hedgehog owner. <laughs> Others are a little bit more odd. There is a uh, cologne which makes women projectile vomit, which you, at any point, if you're thinking this date needs a little bit of a change, can wear, and uh, yeah, you'll get that kind of outcome. Of course, there are some items which do similar things that are just beautiful. This is pepper spray. You get given pepper spray right at the start of Sprung, and at almost any moment during the game, you can pepper spray someone. <laughs> you can be having an innocuous conversation, you can pepper spray. On a date, pepper spray. Just whip it out and pepper spray. That is, and you're encouraged to do it because it's there in your inventory. You, you almost never lose items. You claim all these items and you're encouraged when you get frustrated with the dialogue system and trying to win and get the girl or whatever you do in that 80% of sprung. You try to use it, but it has different reactions. Sometimes people pepper spray you back. Sometimes you end up getting in jail. Anything can happen with pepper spray. <laughs> Amorous action. Oh, one more thing. Pepper spray works down the phone. There is no coding which states that pepper spray should not work during a phone call. <laughs> Amorous action. So here's where Sprung kind of shows its age. Amorous action is something Brett, the male protagonist, has. It is the ability to basically try and snog anyone at any time. It's, it's like pepper spray, but with more lips. Um, you see, we're laughing at this, but um, it, kind of, uh, it kind of gets a little bit creepy. So you, you can literally at any moment just decide to try and, and, and snog someone. Uh, and usually you get punched or a game over. You know, the appropriate reaction you'd want someone to give if someone was trying to force themselves upon you. One character, however, quite likes being, being kissed, and they will try to, uh, they'll try to sexually penetrate your nostril. This game is a Peggy 12. 
There is so much stuff hidden away in Sprung that I don't think the age rating boards ever saw. And, 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 that, and that, that sort of nostril thing kind of, kind of results in a game over where in horror you recoil and you fall through the wall of a dressing room because you're in a dressing room. And in the next dressing room is Becky, the love of your life. And, you know, it's game over because of what's going on there. <laughs> And what little dating there is in Sprung is, is kind of harsh, actually. Oh, no, not yet. What little dating there is in Sprung is kind of harsh. So Brett, as a guy, he can just go out on a date. And, you know, you get a lint roller at one point, but you never actually use it. Becky actually has to do some effort. When you're playing Sprung as a guy, you have to learn the correct application of makeup. Believe it or not, in Sprung, there is a correct order of what makeup you should put on when as Becky. And if you put on too much, the guy might not like it. Brett, meanwhile, just gets to strut around and do what, do whatever he wants. And uh, this kind of applies to the endings as well. So when I read that description earlier, I read out how Brett loved Becky. And you're kind of told as a player, Becky's the love of your life. She's great. She's so hot. She's just right. If you've known her since she was six, perfect. Marry her. Marry her. At the end of Sprung as Brett, you get to, at the last minute, decide who you want. Just completely freely. Whichever girl you want, you've met. Just, yep, cool, pick her, done, job done, get an ending, great. As Becky, you're kind of told, oh, Brett's nice, he's all right, you hardly see him, he's off doing his own thing in his, his sort of game, sort of simultaneous campaigns. But at the end of Becky's game, you get a choice. Brett declares his love for you, and your choice is, you fucking marry Brett, or you just live single. It's your choice, right there or there. And, it, and it's the most weird incongruence. This game that's had all this depth and detail and there's such much strangeness. Right at the end, it comes down to you're hoping for a strange, crazy ending. Your choices are, as a guy, just, you know, pick a girl. You've got to pick a girl. There's no choice. You can't just, can't just go down the pub. No, nope, pick a girl. As a girl, it's like, pick that guy or go away. That is it. But there is something in Sprung that I do love. And I'm going to tell you why it's a game that we shouldn't consign to the trash heap, but we should probably put in the cupboard and whip out every now and again to make people laugh. You see, there is some, um, something special about Sprung. And my page is missing. Ah. I know I can do it. So what's great about Sprung is at the end of every level, you get a little bit of art. It's like your reward for completing the level. And the art isn't art of the game. The art is your character's fantasies and fears. So here's Becky, imagined as Humphrey Bogart's character in Casablanca. And here she is. Uh, she's just got a waitressing job, and she hasn't actually started yet. But here's what she thinks it's going to be like. And it's kind of different that this game that is so weird, so uh, old-fashioned and so dull can have such depth of character when you least expect it. And Brett has the same thing. There's Brett before he starts his job, and he's sort of thinking he's basically going to have a shit job, but that's how he sees it's going to be. And this is Becky. This is how she's perceived that blind date before she went on it. And there's something kind of lovely about characters actually having self-image and fantasies and fears but the game just sort of pops them up at the end of the level as little rewards saying, well done. And the other thing I love about Sprung is there's a game where there's always the lines for you to pick from. You'll never ever, you, you, you can get stuck, you can fail, you can you'll fail a lot in Sprung. But you always have the right line to say somewhere. And that's kind of nice when in real life we're quite often dumbstruck. And I'm going to leave you with some key tips. This is the Valentine's Day. I want to give you some tips to take from Sprung. The lessons that... um. The lesson sprung teaches. Oh, no. I forgot to put my animations in when I transferred it to a PowerPoint. Anyway, okay, men. You have your free pick of women. Take your time. It's all right. Women never go away. Women, marry your best friend or die alone. And finally, pepper spray works down the phone. <laughs> if you'd like to buy sprung, it's like a penny on Amazon and everywhere. Like, seriously. Like, everyone's doing all these talks of video brains about these great old games, and you go to buy it, and it's like 50 quid, and you're like, Jesus Christ. Sprung, dirt cheap, buy it up, everyone play it, or, or don't, I, yeah. And uh, finally, just to let you know, there is actually a Sprung parody game on Newgrounds where Becky is Satan, and you defeat her. Thank you.